Well, do you want to do, no. do a little bit of a... Oh. <laughs> no, this is the end of the episode. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, do you want to cut? Because it says cut right here. And I was going to tell you, uh -huh. like, no, let's just keep on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kiobo, Kiobo, le montras van a empezar este festejo sin mí. Welcome to yet another Drag Race Review Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Blass. And I am Chucho Quintero. And this is The J Word, your home for all things Drag Race Mexico. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm glad you're great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's start off. Let's do this right away. Let's go into some housekeeping so that I can, once again, explain my look. <laughs> so I just saw Barbie. I didn't realize this when I watched it, but um, the cinematographer, the DP, is um, Rodrigo Prieto, who has worked on a ton of movies. And um, the thing that was brought to my attention was that, you know, everybody talking about, everybody's talking about how there's so much pink in the movie, obviously, right? But that like, there's a specific pink used in the movie, which is the Rosa Mexicano, mm -hmm. right? And I read this article, it was really great, where he, he talked about how he introduced Greta Gerwig to this color. He's like, well, this has to be in the movie. And she was like, what is that? And he told her that it's this specific shade of pink, which of course now is all over the movie. And um, that it's it's a shade that's meant to sort of, it was inspired by like the Bougainvillea, right? It was, that, it was Johnny, Johnny Carmona, our dear friend Johnny Carmona told this story on an episode of La Mas Draga. I can't remember which season, but it was an episode of La Mas Draga, which the theme right. for the wrong way was Rosa Mexicano. And so, you know, Johnny always gives you the story behind every single prompt for La Mas Draga, which I, I appreciate so much. Yeah. And um, it was the designer, you know, an artist, a photographer, painter. His name was Ramon Valdiosera, yes. and he created uh, Rosa Mexicano. So I just like, I like letting people know, like, you're watching Barbie, and what you're watching is brought to you by an amazing Mexican cinematographer, right? Yeah. Um, not only that, but I didn't realize when I watched the movie, I mean, I knew America Ferreira was in it. I have a soft spot for her, not just because of Ugly Betty, but because I think she looks like my mom when my mom was young. <laughs> um, but there's there's a very, very much featured Latina storyline in the movie, and it was great. So I think that's, I don't know, it was just really cool. I had a great time watching it. So today, I'm giving Barbie. <laughs> Um, the second thing for housekeeping that we've got is um, the cast was announced for season two of Drag Race Philippines. I love Philippines. I thought it was a great season. But the reason that I mention this is because as I was watching the first season, um, you know, a lot of it's in Tagalog, but there are over 4,000 Spanish words, like borrowed words in, in Tagalog. And then a lot of them also speak English and they would bounce back and forth between all the languages. So I was like, oh, I understand two thirds of what they're saying without subtitles. So it was kind of great. And there's so much Spanish spoken in it and so much crossover, I think, with some things within the culture. So it's great. Philippines is, a, I think, a, one of the better franchises. Um, so I'm excited for that, too. Because of, because of colonization. Because <laughs> of is, colonization. Which, which is a terrible way to start a sentence. But because of colonization, there is, uh, you know, you have the Americas, of course, and you have... Spain in Europe, and you have Guinea Equatorial, Equatorial Guinea in, in Africa, and you have, you know, the, the Philippines in, in, in Asia, because it's like, we are distant cousins, because we were colonized by the same, by the same country. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the names are always, it's always surprising to me that the names are basically, you know, the same names. There are Mendoza, San Juarez, and Perez, and Lopez, and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, but support Drag Race Philippines. It's it's a fun franchise. Yeah. Um. The next piece of housekeeping is going to come straight from you. So yes. why don't you give it to us? So this is episode three of the Pixie Pixie Maria Felix dress drama. Um, uh -huh. This is the conclusion of the saga, I promise, because okay. everything was explained. But it was explained in a live stream that she did on Instagram with Yajoy Bowery from La Mas Draga. And, uh, and she spilled so much tea, like so much tea that I literally have a whole document of tea <laughs> oh that God. we're going to go through it really fast. And then at the end, we're going to 
explained what happened with the dress. Everything was solved. We know, you know, the tea and, and everything. So here it is. So basically, uh, I'm going to start. Boom. <laughs> she was specifically chosen to walk in first into the workroom because her outfit was so iconic, you know, with the spinning nipples and the black and white and the umbrella mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, but they had to reshoot the entrance a couple of times because the moment she raised uh, her umbrella for the first time, she saw the entire crew and the cameras and everything and she froze. So they had to reshoot it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, it's, it surprised her because she didn't know they yes, would all be there. Or? Yes, yes, because she walked in with the umbrella covering her face. So she oh, literally, she literally, yes, exactly. Uh, well, uh, Gala and her dated, you know, a, a few, uh, they went on a few dates and Pixie was actually falling for her like real hard. But Gala was like, yeah, whatever. Because uh, Pixie said this, by the way, don't come for me. Pixie says that Gala was only with Pixie because Pixie was trendy at the moment. And so Gala was only dating her for clout. And so Pixie got her heart really, you know, broken because she was falling for her. And Gala just broke up with her after a few days and was like, yeah, whatever, this is not going to work. Uh, then when she got this talk, when she had this talk with uh, Christian about their families and everything, she actually broke down talking about her, her father. And, uh, and it was like a really ugly scene. But she's very grateful that production actually got it, you know, that we didn't see the entire conversation and the entire breakdown. And she yeah. says that production has actually been taking real good care of the queens because they have caught things that would make them look really bad, you know? And so she's really grateful with how they have handled the editing on the show. Let's see what happens in season two. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that maybe they're going to learn from the well, US, the moment, from the US the franchise. Want, yeah, the moment they want some drama. Yes, exactly. It's going to be there. Uh, they've they, got, they'll, have it, they'll have it in the can. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Big can. I hate you so much. <laughs> they got, in the reading challenge, they got a, a, re, a read from Pixie to Margaret that was all about La Mastraga. And so they were like, okay, we're we going to cut that. Yes, we're yeah. going to cut that. Uh, they cut... We don't see anything from on top, nothing, nothing at all, because they cut basically the entire thing. And she says that it's been incredible that on top has, have, has had fights, that they have read each other for field, that it's been such a juicy on top and we just don't see it. Well, well we wait know. a minute. Isn't, isn't, isn't the, aren't these episodes shorter than like the yes. US? Yes, they, they are. Yes, so they are. if they want to make them a little longer, they can include some of that stuff. Yes. So she says that Untucked has been iconic, but we will never see it. At least not this season. It's been what? I can't. Iconico. <laughs> okay. uh, obviously, she said that she helped everyone with the quinceañera dress, but like way more than what we saw, you know? Uh, so so Jajoy uh, actually said this that and I think she she I think it's pretty interesting that Drag Race Mexico has pretty much been ignoring the fact that many of these queens know each other from before, you know, and, mm. and that Gala, Pixie, Margaret, they know each other. And they she feels that the show kind of has ignored that there's like already like a whole story and culture before drag race came to mexico you know well, so even in this episode weird. like no it's not a spoiler but even in this episode margaret's like oh i'm sad that pixie's gone but like she, you know she she lives in mexico city and so do i so i know <laughs> like, yeah. she says. But, like, like, but like yeah. she feels that, that they are not really embracing what we already had here before they came you know yeah and she reveals that the director of the show is a Spanish. So maybe that has something to do with it. You know, like the oh. producing in Colombia and the director is a Spanish. Like, I've, I feel like the editors are, have never seen an episode of Drag Race. Anyway, uh, uh, Pixie Pixie uh, said that Johnny Carmona once told her that she should go on La Mas Draga and do and fulfill every single prompt in black and white so that it would stay true to herself. This was yeah. many years before, many years ago, when she was 100% black and white. What happened was that during the, the La Mas Draga 4 auditions, Pixie got self-conscious about her aesthetic because the fans, you know, the fandom as always, were really critical of her black and white aesthetic because they were really like, oh, she's she always going to be black and white. That's so boring. That's always the same, blah, blah, blah. So Who she got, cares? I know she got so self-conscious that she started adding color to her looks, which at the end of the day, I mean, we have. So let me, some... let me, let me clarify. I don't mean who cares like, like, um, Pixie, why do you care about? Like, I, I don't mean that. I mean, yeah. like, as if you're a fan, 
dude, she's giving you drag. And imagine, no, like, imagine cares? because the the, the 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 kind of the timeline of this is that Johnny told her this before the La Mas Draga for auditions. Then she went on La Mas Draga for auditions, and the fans said this, so she changed her aesthetic. Imagine if she had gone into the show and literally do every single prompt in black and white. Like it would have been iconic because she would have interpreted every single prompt in a unique way that no one else was doing. So yeah. anyway, whatever. Uh, also, Pixie doesn't have a visa yet. I think she's in the process of getting one. So she has had to turn down many gigs outside the country that have been coming her way since the show started. Yes. She she would she would love to go to Dracon, but not only her, but like the entire black and white house, which would be yeah. awesome. Super iconic. Uh, hey, so, hi. <laughs> they give them around two and a half months for La Mas Draga to get ready from the moment they tell them that they're on the show to the moment they shoot the show. But they gave them like a third of that for Drag Race Mexico. So basically nothing, like two weeks. Like two or three okay. weeks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And they were allowed to bring very few cases, very few suitcases, like almost like very few suitcases. And... Um, and so she wouldn't go right back into All Star right now if they offer or like Mexico versus the world or Spain versus the world because she wants to wait a little bit more to grow and evolve, but she wants to do it just later, you know? And um, and the look this week that we're going to talk about is one of her favorites. And the one, there, there's one coming up, we don't know exactly when, that it's also one of her favorites. So we're still going to get two iconic looks. Well, we already got one. We're going to get another one uh, very soon. And now... This is the drama with the dress. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is like, I don't know how this NDA works because this, this sounds pretty juicy. So basically, they did a pre-selection of the looks. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Of the Maria Felix? Yes, the Maria like... Felix, the Maria Felix wrong way. And so she pitched the one that she wanted to do, which was the one that she got made after the show that we saw and we loved and blah, blah. She pitched it. She didn't make it. She just pitched that she wanted to do it. Okay. And they turned her down. They said, like, no, you cannot do that one. And they imposed, she used that word, they imposed a look on her that she didn't want to do. And her designer had to replicate exactly because there was no creative freedom for the challenge. The challenge had to, the looks had to be replicas of Maria Felix's looks. Not all of them really were, though. Most of them kind of were, like the yeah. the, the, the 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 kind of the 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 creative like sparks in some of them were very you know very tame yeah. in comparison with what we could have gotten, and so she included the impersonation of Maria Felix on the runway so that she could sell the look that she wasn't enjoying very much, and yeah. so that's the story that she pitched the look that we saw later. They said no. She did another look that she didn't want to do. And then when she came back from shooting the show, she got the look that she wanted. She got it made. And that's why that's what we got. On now, I, Instagram. I, under, I understand that like when they do Night of a Thousand Whoever's, that to avoid Kimono Gate again, that now they have to pitch like, okay, so what look are you going to do? Yes, so that, that they don't have a bunch sense. of the same uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. Fine. But then just let them do what they want. Like if if unless the, unless one of them's like, I want to do this, and someone else has already chosen that, you know, like my, fine. But my interpretation of this is that because it was again, this is season one, so probably they wanted to do something very literal, so yeah. that people who don't know Maria Felix were like, oh, so this is who they're talking about, and so maybe later on on another season. Maybe they're gonna allow them to be, yeah, a little bit more free with that. But yeah, your girl is not happy right now. Can you hear it? <laughs> but like, is it annoying or? It's loud. <laughs> well, we got the whole story. All yeah. right. Um. Well. The next piece of housekeeping is that we received a few little gifts from Wow Presents Plus. They were very kind yeah. and sent us some stuff. Um, we mostly got the same things, but do you want to show us what you got? Yeah, for example. 
<laughs> oh my god, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did not we did not plan that. <laughs> no. And this is the greatest gift of them all. This has always been my dream. Yeah. We also got some pins. Oh, the batch we were talking about. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So here's mine. And I named it. I call it the Monarca batch. So that's oh. ca that's canon now. <laughs> we also got a shade button. <laughs> oh my gosh, you and I are on the same wavelength right now. Yes. <laughs> we got stickers. Yes, they're wrong here. I already, I already used two of mine. But yeah. <laughs> so I got some lovely House of Love cocktails. <laughs> yeah, I did not. <laughs> it matches my outfit. What did yeah. you get? Instead that of that. You, that you didn't get? I, I don't know. Books. Oh my God, I got three notebooks. I know. So that's great. That's what they yes, give you instead yes. of the cocktails. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, great. Those are so, those <laughs> they're are so cool. Like, they're like, get to writing and Terry's going to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're pretty cool. I love, I love that's notebooks, cool. you know. I mean, if you want this stuff, you can go to WoW Presents Plus on, online and, you know, get your own little Monarca badge. Yeah. If you aren't already subscribed to WoW Presents Plus, we have a little gift for you. You can use the code MEXICO, all in caps, for 20% off of your first month of WoW Presents Plus. So you can also do that. And then you can watch all the international franchises. Well, in this episode, the queens enter the workroom and they read Pixie's mirror message. Um, that message says, Ahí les dejo los Pixie Lindros. We'll get into that. No se van a librar de mi culeras. Las amo chingonas. Echenle huevos. Los ama. Pixie Pixie. Yes. Now, first, explain this Pixie Lindros because there's a thing there. So... This, what, this is like mind blowing to me, but apparently this was exclusive to Mexico because you don't know about them. So, I mean, uh, in the 90s, we had uh, this product by Pepsi that is basically a water bottle. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to put it right here, but it's basically a water bottle um, that you could exchange uh, for like, you know, the, the caps, you know, from the from the Pepsi. And you would get a few of them and you could exchange them from one. And they were like Looney Tunes themed and Batman themed because it was when the first Batman movie came out. So 89, 90. And, uh, and so, uh, the you know, Mexican families throughout the 90s had these Pepsi Lindros around the house, you know, a bunch of them. And you could just use them every day. And so we grew up with Pepsi Lindros. And now they're like really expensive online because like they're obviously been out of print for like, you know, many, many years. And uh, and so apparently you don't know about them. So that means that they were exclusive oh, to Mexico. They don't make them anymore? No, this was like okay. a, a, something <clears throat> in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so and so Pixie cylinders from Pixie and Pepsi Lindros, yeah. So do you, is that what Pixie's fans are called? Pixie Lindros? I, I guess. <laughs> um, so the other thing that's crazy about this mirror message is that before we even get to see it or read it, it shows a little notebook that someone has left for her and it's not her handwriting. Yeah, I didn't get that part. And someone wrote on a little notebook and left it on her mirror. It says, Pixie, nunca te des por vencida. Eres fuerte. Who knows who it came from, right? So Margaret comments on how what, they're all in the workroom now, and Margaret comments on how Christian can't stop talking like she is the shit, like she's the best, right? And Margaret, um, she seems a little put off by it. Um, Argenis is congratulated on winning the lip sync from the previous episode, and in confessional, she says something like, well, if you have to lip sync against me, watch out. And I was <laughs> like, is this storytelling? Is this a little foreshadowing here? Hmm. So, after that, it's a new day in the work <laughs> and they comment about how they can all fit around the table now, which is kind of funny. Um, there's some talk about what happened with Argenis and her, like not her attitude, but like her emotional state, I guess, in the previous episode, Valentina interrupts this with her clue, her like video message about this week's challenge. She enters the workroom and gives them a dirty joke, which Argenis immediately turns into our third or fourth reference about Pixie's big dick. <laughs> no, oh. it was, it was Gala. It was Gala. Gala right. said, uh, Gala right. said because, yeah, because, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, yeah, you're right, because right. Valentina yeah, said, like, like, uh, you have to be las mas picudas. So, like, the, uh -huh. mo the, the most, you know, fierce, but also, like, you know, the most pointy. 
So, yeah. uh, so Gala, is, Gala like, is like, oh no, she already left. <laughs> also, they call her when they read her message on the in on the mirror. They call her Pito Pito instead of Pixie mm -hmm. Pixie. And they're like, yeah. you know, Tick Tick. So it's it's so uh, maybe it's uh, the fourth reference now. So the clue for for this uh, girl group challenge uh, mm -hmm. was pretty iconic because at first I was like, you know, listening to the clue and I was like, oh, th those are lyrics from girl groups. But then I was like. How, how many are there? You know, how many how many girl groups they're mentioning? They're only mentioning two, actually. And we have more, but like they're only mentioning two. They're mentioning two songs from jeans and two songs from flans. And yes, flans, I mean like flan like the dessert. <laughs> and uh, what what we I just realized that our girl groups are named after objects. <laughs> jeans <Yeah>. and flans. <laughs> and flan. mm -hmm. Uh so anyway. Uh, so they're mentioning two lyrics by Jeans and two lyrics by Flans. Flans is kind of like more 80s and Jeans is very late 90s, early 2000s. And, uh, but yeah, the Flans and Jeans, they basically raised uh, two whole generations of gays. So yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. So for the mini reto, they have to drag up a pair of boots and do a little dance. Um I do think it's surprising. I think you might feel this way too. It's surprising that they didn't make them get into like quick drag. Yeah, I was like, right? okay, so the, the, the boots are in, in drag, obviously, but like they are like just wearing regular clothes. Like that's weird, you know? Uh, yeah. But anyway, do you know Tribal? No? Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't, this is, I did zero research for this, so don't come for me. <laughs> but it's, a, it's basically kind of like a subculture, you know, it's like from maybe... 10 years ago or like 15 years ago or like something like that. Um, that it's basically like uh, this kind of like regional kind of like cumbia from the north kind of thing that they did with modern uh, electronic uh, sounds. Okay. So it's kind of like mixing like electronic with like traditional regional music. And uh, and so the boots are kind of like uh, iconic because they, they are actually way longer, way pontier than that. Than what we saw. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one. So yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know why, but they forced them to dance inside of a lit up plastic square. I was um, gonna tell you, like, I'm pretty sure that it was because they don't want to ruin the floor. <laughs> I, I, I am was talking like, about. I am talking about Saran wrap. Like, yes. go buy a mat. Go buy a mat for two dollars. <laughs> But I was like, they don't want to mess with the floor because, girl, they got to reuse it for Drag Race Brazil and Drag Race Germany. <laughs> so but it's like, buy take a care of the floor. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> so <laughs> as they're dancing, there's a very big mistake in this mini reto. I'm surprised. Like, I literally thought when I saw it that I was like, oh, they're going to fix this and they'll re-upload the episode. Is this why the episode was late in Mexico? Like, so many thoughts, right? It's still there as of this morning, as of recording this. When Regina is dancing, the credit at the bottom of who this queen is says, and with their picture, Cristian Peralta, Transformista Oficial. Oficial. Yes. Like, what? I also noticed during this challenge when they're like dragging up the boots that um, a bunch of them have tattoos, right? And so I noticed a few of them, which I just wanted to mention real quick. Um, Margaret has a mermaid behind her left ear. That's really funny considering her last look. Um, she also has on her right arm a tattoo that says, I am not a robot. But it looks like it says robot <laughs> for some oh, reason. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why, but um, Gala has the creation hands on her, um, like God and Adam, like, you know, mm -hmm. on her left arm. Lolita has um, a, this big like Jaguar Aztec warrior on her left arm. And Regina has a musical staff like ribbon behind her right ear. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat. Um, anyway, the winners of the mini reto are Argenis and Matraca. I was going to say that uh, also when Argenis was choosing her team. Uh, so you, we know that uh, the reads, basically all of the reads for Argenis last episode were like, oh, you're Christian's lab dog for some reason. And um, and so uh, Argenis was choosing the, her, her team and she chose Christian and she was like, now you are going to be on my shadow. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that was funny. I was like, gotta get yeah. Argenis' team ends up being Galavaro, Christian Peralta, Transformista Oficial, and Lady Quero. Um, yes. They decide 
eventually that their team name is Las Palanquetas. Because they're sweet, but like hard to bite. Cr- but crunchy. <laughs> but, but crunchy. Yes. <laughs> Matraca chooses Regina and then Margaret. Margaret. And when Margaret comes in, she goes, ooh, Las Mamis. <laughs> so I was like, oh, is this a new click? Like the three of them, right? Maybe. So um, once Serena Morena comes into their group, um, they decide, I think, because of what Margaret just said, that their name is going to be um, Las Mexi Mamis. And then Christian has a weird, like, I think because Serena Morena says, like, Milanesa Empanisa. No, uh, it's Lady is... Quero. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. But then, Chris, like, Christian says, like, in a weird voice. I don't understand what that is. You love Milanesa Empanisa. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I don't get it either. <laughs> so, like, if you know what she meant, like, if you know if it's a character that maybe I don't know or something, just comment below. The thing that I found interesting about um, this episode was that in last week's episode, we got to see, um, like, a dance rehearsal for their performance, right? But we didn't get to see them recording the music. This week, it's flipped. So we get to see them recording um, and going through their verses, rehearsing that instead of a dance rehearsal. So what I want to do is go through just a little bit of what I noticed as they were recording. Um, Matraca has a verse that I never really like when queens do this. And it's basically just her name split yeah, yeah. up. Her whole her whole verse is ma tra ta tra ka 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 ma 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 ma. And I'm like, yes or no. Yes and no, not, because it's she not uses her whole verse. No, 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 but... no, I know, I know. But she uses the syllables we're gonna see later. She uses the syllables to 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 kind of like make up other words, you know. So yeah, yeah. Sure, girl. Um, I noticed there's a lot of English in Margaret's. I saw that you noticed that, and I checked, and not really. But we're gonna we're gonna see. She says superstar. She says um. Like crazy bitch. She said, like, she says several oh, like, is English. That, is things. that too much for you? Is that like so much English for you? It's not too much for me, but it's more than everybody else. Well, yeah, I guess. So, um, Serena surprises everyone with her like speed rapping. Um, and uh, in Regina's verse, she's kissing like Valentina and Lolita's ass like real hard. <laughs> so, we all know that uh, many queens have said this on reviews and and uh, pit, pit stuff and everything that everybody in in the drag race family is just sick of the come on mama ru crown this bitch you know it's just like stop telling mama ru to like crown you and it's been shown that many of the queens who said that just go home or whatever so i'm probably sure that uh probably rupaul doesn't like it either and so this is kind of like that it's like uh you know almost like yes valentina lolita crown this queen and he's like well just don't do that. Come on, girl. <laughs> One of my favorite, um, like, little verses or, like, lyrics in a Drag Race song was when Simone said, my name's Simone, and I'm here for the throne. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's not the crown. It was like, oh, yeah. that was kind of a fun way to do that but not do it. Um, with the next team, uh, Lolita tells Argenis to give her less Julie Andrews and more Alejandro. <laughs> that's so specific, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Lady Quero says that she's going to do bad, but she actually does well in the recording. Because, like, the, basically, Lolita's like, oh, we can't wait to hear you. And she's like, mm, you don't want to hear me. Um, they want, they say that they want more attitude from Gala's voice, which um, was, th- there was, like, a point here where they go to a confessional, or a part here where they go into the confessional, and Gala talks about how um, she's always been kind of self-conscious of her voice. And Juanita, the producer, says, like, you got to learn to love your voice, right? I related to what Gala was saying here because I feel like sometimes as queer people, when we hear our voice recorded and we hear it back, played back to us, we think this is betraying, like, it's telling everybody that I'm gay, my voice, right? And I can hear it now. Um, at this point, I could I could not care less. Like, my voice, I, my voice is my voice, whatever, I don't care even though when you come out and some people are like oh I always knew or whatever like I think that's not always nice to hear because when you haven't come out yet even if people can kind of tell you still are likely trying to like you haven't told anybody so you're still likely trying to keep it secret so there's this hint of like oh well we always knew no matter what you tried to do we could always tell you were gay you know what I mean like there's a little bit of 
that kind of undertone to it. So um, it was interesting with such a small little confessional moment that like, oh, Gala, she's very shady, but like she has these moments of like, oh, I can relate to that, you know? Um, so the final person is Christian. Uh, uh, Valentina says she wants more Laura Leon from her. So <laughs> do you want to get into that? Oh yeah, uh, sure. I should. How, how can I? How can I begin to explain Laura Leon? <laughs> <laughs> she, she has two friendly persons now. Um, so Laura Leon is this. I mean, is this icon of of music and and telenovelas here in Mexico? But um, <laughs> her voice is very particular because she's not a great singer, but she has managed to have a whole career out of the way that she has masked her not so good voice. You know what I mean? So she's famous for her vibrato, but it's like, it's a very specific vibrato because what she does is that because she doesn't, she cannot hit, you know, certain notes. What she does is like, she finishes the, uh, she's singing and she finishes the note like the eh, 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 and then she go oh 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 oh, and it's like the eh, eh, okay. eh, eh, and it's like. Dos mujeres compartiendo el mismo hombre, el mismo amor. That's just how she does it, you know. And it's so it's like. So it's more thing, about like you know a, I mean? a like a rhythm, like a rhythm that they. Yeah. Want from. Also, yeah. That's that's the thing. Like she has so yeah. much. You know, so much flow, so much like, you know, yeah, like Mexicanness in her oh. in her voice that uh, that that's what makes her unique. So so yeah, they were asking her to go, you know, Laura Leon. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, after that, like they cut and you know, llegamos a la día de, de la eliminación. Um, when they enter the workroom, they're missing a person, and they realize, mm -hmm. you know, where is where is Magos? <laughs> um, and she comes in with a birthday cake because it's Matraca's birthday. Yeah. So that was really, it was really sweet. They sing um, Las Mañanitas for her. If, I guess if you don't know, it's like the birthday song in Mexico. Um, my parents, every birthday, call me at like six in the morning. Yes. And start starting on Esta Son, Las Mañani, you know, and I'm so like, oh can... my God. The crazy, <laughs> thing of, the crazy thing about Las Mañanitas is that it has so many lyrics. It's like a whole ass song. And Happy Birthday has like, two lines you know <laughs> yeah yeah anyway um and then when they after they are done celebrating you know uh matraca's birthday uh they all go get ready but when they go get ready somebody i cannot remember who it was but somebody says Aquí se rompió una jerga y cada quien se va a la verga. so this is a little rhyme that we do uh, usually the, the PG version is aquí se rompió una taza y cada quien se va a su casa. So it's like a cup has been broken, so now everybody gets to go home. Obviously in Spanish it rhymes. But the dirty version is that a piece of cloth that you use to clean the floors has been broken here, so everybody go fuck yourselves. You know, that's <laughs> kind of like the dirty version because taza cup rhymes with casa, house, casa. but jerga, the piece of cloth that we use to clean the floors, rhymes with verga, dick, and in this case, irse a la verga is like, go fuck yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, yeah, while they're getting ready, Margaret pulls out a big ass knife <laughs> to cut the cake, and she's very like, it's very weird. Um, <laughs> she talks with Matraca, and Matraca opens up about being like a depressed kid. Um, and having to take care of her parents. She talks a little bit about being bullied. Um, and it's really sweet because she says like what saved her was being an artist and drawing and, you know, believing that one day she would be like a superstar. Um, this is another one of those drag race moments where it's like, yeah, you've come a really, really long way and you should be proud of like what you've done and the art that you, I guess, are putting out into the world now. So that was a really nice theme. Right after that in Confessional, Margaret talks about how Matraca opening up right there makes her feel a lot more connected to her because she was also someone who felt like she had to raise herself a little bit, right? Um, so that brings us to the runway. Um, Valentina and Lolita come out. Valentina is, she's giving me hairspray. She's giving me 60s. I love this look. 
Um, Lolita is giving me a wig that's flatter than a pancake or crepas with nothing on them. So like, I, I don't like it. I'm sorry. Sorry, Dolores. Sorry to this. Sorry to this woman. Um, anyway, Valentina in this like intro compares herself to Selena yet again. <laughs> Later, I think we see why, right? Um, and she introduces the guest judge who is Alejandra Bogue. So do you want to yeah, give us a little so, insight? It's going to be real quick. I don't, I don't want this to turn into a, the Alejandra Bogue show, which it could very much be. So Alejandra Bogue is a trans legend icon that has been, you know, she has been working her butt off for many decades and uh, and she has paved the way for everyone, you know, like the two icons that we owe everything to, Francis and Alejandra Bogue. And Francis was a cis man, as far as we know, he was a, a legendary drag queen. And she, he's, she's basically the, the grandmother of all drag queens. And, uh, but Alejandra Bogue is a, is a trans woman. And to me, she also, does drag because like her characters are very draggy, you know. Uh, she was on this show, uh, Desde Gallola, that we have talked about in the past. Um, that is basically the show that introduced so many gay and trans performers and writers and comedians to uh, a whole generation uh, on Mexican TV, which is wild. Uh, she was on this show called Mujer, Mujer Casos de la Vida Real, which is kind of like La Rosa de Guadalupe, uh, but less less religious. <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, obviously. <laughs> And uh, and so she was on this episode where this this trans woman took care of a kid, and then because the mom abandoned him, but then the mom comes back and she's like, "I'm gonna take the kid away from you because like you're you know you're a, a monster, you're like something you know an abomination, blah blah." And uh, and it's a it's a really iconic moment on TV because it's like not only a trans character but a trans character played by a trans actress on literal uh, prime time TV. Uh, so yeah. Uh, she's hilarious. She after Desde Gallola, she had her own show where we saw uh, in Desde Gallola, we saw La Tesorito, which is a, a character that she does based on Laura Leon <laughs> that we talked about this episode. And basically, kind of like with La Roña and Maria Felix, La Vogue doing La Tesorito is kind of the way that you have to impersonate Laura Leon now because it's kind of like the easier route to take. Uh, but there are so many things that were mentioned in this uh, episode, like you know, like, ah, yeah, yeah, that's kind of like her doing La Tesorito. And okay. uh, yeah. Mis, mis that's also like, I cannot do the voice, I'm sorry. But that's also like, kind of like one of her catchphrases as La Tesorito. And then she also has another character that's called Betty Bell Cinco. And uh, it's this actress, this washed up actress that is clinging to her youth, you know. And she's a, a junkie. <laughs> but it's the most hilarious thing because like, she she does these runs of like synonyms or like things that she kind of like connects in kind of like a chain of jokes every time that she speaks. So it's kind of complicated to explain, but but one of one of the more famous ones is like when she goes like quieta callada y de perfil. You know, it's like quiet, uh, you know, silent and in profile. <laughs> and so quieta callada y de perfil, like my mom says it. It became so famous. Like mm. it's it's uh, whatever. And uh, uh, bailarina in puntas, you know, because she's a ballerina and she's like on point all the time. And so she has all these catchphrases and she's like really, really funny. Like she, she's hilarious. And I love that Galabaro and uh, Serena and, 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 you know, the Queens kind of like acknowledged that she has paved the way for if you're gay, queer, trans, drag queen, and you're on Mexican media, it's because of her and it's because of Francis. It was very sweet to have her on the show and the show acknowledging how important she was. But I gotta say this, she should have judged Snatch Game <laughs> because that's literally her, her, you know, her, her talent, her legacy is all the yeah. characters that she has done. So yeah, anyway. Weird. I wonder why certain people have been asked to judge certain episodes. That's, you know. It's all a scheduling thing, you know. Otherwise, we, otherwise we, would have, we would have gotten Dana Paola judging the girl group challenge as she should have. Right. You know, right. but anyway. Um. Well, speaking of the girl group challenge, the song that they do is called Así Soy Yo. And first up, we have uh, Palanquetas. There's a line there that I really like, which was like, I could be a her or a him and walk down the street mm -hmm. and he was like yes iconic 
Um, yeah, that was good. I liked the lyrics of the, the song. Yeah. And Argenis, uh, uh, her verse is, Hola, soy la mejor drag queen. El baile es todo mi arte. Y soy mamona un poco, sí. Yo brillaré y por ti y por mí, camaleónica. That was her verse. Okay. I, I, I liked it. I was surprised that like she sounded really good. I thought I was like, oh, she can sing. So she sounded good. I liked her a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then Galavaro goes, Soy Galavaro, la dama peligrosa, tan gloriosa como glamurosa. Tu boca chueca, a mí no me importa. Yo vine aquí a robar la corona. Aunque no quieras tenerme presente, soy una estrella feliz y sonriente. Un poco odiosa, pero encantadora. Al final, todo el mundo me adora. So some of her rhymes I thought were like pretty good, but she's yeah. definitely give, giving us, my name is Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. It's right? kind of like it's kind of like I'm a bitch. You're gonna hate me, but you're gonna end up loving me. And it's like, okay, sure. <laughs> Did you notice? I don't know if you noticed that Galavaro, the entire country noticed, girl. <laughs> like, I don't know if this is like okay, a let, well. Let's... Why would I need? Why would I need to, to? Like, that's part of my aesthetic. Is like so. Now I'm wondering if that's where we're at. Is like she no, didn't feel like okay, that. So here, that? here's okay. here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are many ways to see this. So, yes, we acknowledge that all drag is valid, and we have had drag queens who don't talk, and that's great, good for them, that's their style, their thing. This is a girl group challenge. <laughs> so it's a specific aesthetic and a specific prompt that you have to look like the Spice Girls, a Little Mix, in this case, Flans, Jeans, and so you have to look like a, a stereotypical young girl. You know, young cisgender girl. So I feel like for the prompt, it's kind of like, girl, come on. You can do that statement on the wrong way, but like you wouldn't do Maria Felix with like, a, you know, without talking or something. Like it, it's, it's, it's it, 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 that. But also somebody yeah. said something that I feel like it's also, you know, commendable in a way if she did it because of that, but I don't know if she did it because of that, which is like, well, but she is representing, uh, you know, the, the fact that we have to acknowledge that not all women, uh, you know, uh, that some women have penises and blah, blah. And there's a whole thing that I've seen online about like trans women being like, you know, if I don't want to talk one day, like you cannot come for me for not talking because I, I shouldn't be, you know, forcing myself to talk for you or whatever. Yeah. So that's commendable. But I don't think she did it because of that. So, so it's like, girl, come on, you know. It was just weird. Let's just say. Yeah, it's anyway, fine. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, so Next. lady, <laughs> lady Kero was. Yo soy la Kero, la picante y bella. Soy gordibuena y me miran las tetas, pero no quiero que solo las veas. Ven chiquitito y veamos estrellas. That was cute. <laughs> it's cute. I, I felt like it went by really fast. It felt like a short verse. That compared was to the pretty other short, but yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I love her braids. Yeah. Then Christian, she did a, a whole uh, opera. Uh, she was like, Abran el paso, la reina llegó. Me dicen perra y un poco vulgar, pero soy tierna como un animal. Por mi familia yo vine a ganar, aguarden poco, ya voy a llegar. Vine salvaje como una felina, bien coronada, tu reina latina. Mi género, tú puedes criticar las etiquetas en el superman. Okay. Here is, I thought her verse was fine. It was good, right? That was long. The, yeah. thing, I, the thing I noticed twice was that in rehearsal and in her performance right here, the word animal was subtitled as aminal. I don't know why. <laughs> so this is my this is my second plea for like Baya come hire me, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, then we have last Mexi Mamis. And uh, first up is Matraca with your favorite verse. <laughs> I really liked that their Así soy yo, started with their names. Like yes. they were like announcing who they were. Okay, so Matraca goes, Mama, mama, tra, 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 tra. <laughs> tú lo que quieras, no, tú lo que quieres, mamá. Yo lo que tengo, tra, tra. Muy pegadito lo tuyo y lo mío. Te trueno, te acabo, no puedes conmigo. Que truene y que truene para el pueblo, mi gente. Yo vengo bien perra, altiva y ardiente. Mama, mama, tra, 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 tra. Mama, 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 tra, 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 tra. <laughs> I like all of it except for the mama mama. I know, I know. <laughs> but I love how she uses the, you know, you want mama and I have tra tra for you. That's kind of cool. Come that's on. clever, but like I don't need to hear it 
that much. Yeah. And now, uh, Serena Desaurus Morena, <laughs> because she goes, Soy ese beat que está hecho para ti, tu perrita sandunguera aquí, de agüitas presente, con la morena candente, del mar tu sirena, la que está bien pinche buena, con caderas de selena que te pone muy amena, tu postre en la cena, la que truena la colmena. Ya dame tu berenjena, que conmigo no hay pena. Like, girl, mama goose. <laughs> yeah, but I liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's clever, but you were like, I'm going to rhyme every word <laughs> in this sentence. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, then Margaret, uh, she goes, soy la icónica, una superstar, gordita, bonita, una reina en la pista. Me critican las cejas, pero no he tenido quejas. Soy una inspiración para gente un montón. Doble Géminis, una crazy bitch. Subestímame a mí, este va a ser tu fin. Ok. Uh, um, but yeah, I love her, and I love the outfit. <laughs> I couldn't tell what it was. Was it like a rabbit? Yeah, what was it? Something. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Then Regina goes... La reina Regina, la perra más fina, soporta mi belleza, la verdad estoy divina. Cantante, actriz, cintura de lombriz. Yo sé que quieres conmigo, pero no soy para ti. Solo Valentina igual a mi hermosura. Estamos bien buenas nuestras curvas, nuestras curvas, qué ricura. Lolita Banana es mi super hermana. Después de este reality ya es mi mamita chula. So like, uh, I, think you, I, think you mean, I think you, I think you mean chul, chulita. Ah, sorry, ya es mi mamita chula. Yeah, so, something yeah. like that. Because she get because she gives us a run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to me, I, I I like most of the lyrics, to be honest. I do too. Um, I feel like, in general, the Mexi Mommies felt more like a girl group mm -hmm. to me, because the other group did have some choreography that was um for the whole group, but. The Mexi Mommy's choreography for the whole group happened at every chorus. Yes, yes. And it brought them together and it was yes. fun. And I loved how it was like kind of bouncy and they yes. would like, you know, do that. Um, so I really liked them. But to me, they felt the most like, you know, a girl group. I agree. Regina, Re Regina's really giving us like the look, I think, of like, I'm in a girl group. Everyone at like, Matraca's giving you fashion and Margaret's giving you some rabbit. So like- But, but come on, that, that look for it, Matraca but... was incredible. It's incredible, but it's not, not group, for but... yes, I know, not for the prompt, but it was incredible. <laughs> I, that's uh, listen, that's what I said. It was incredible, but not not for a girl group. Um, we we have a very talented bunch of girls. Yeah, it was really good. I like and, it. Uh, it and yeah, yeah, I just yeah. God, anyway, I'm not gonna talk about Acapulco Shore anymore. And I promise. <laughs> okay, well, this week the runway song is "You Wear It Well" by RuPaul. The runway theme is Flores de Mexico. Um, it could have been Como la Flor. Like, uh, uh, but, girl, uh, the uh, puns uh, are not uh, punning. You are get, you're getting ahead of me because I don't understand why this week's lip sync song wasn't Como la Flor to match the runway theme. I of... do get it. Because como la, como la Flor is a very, it has a long ass intro. And then when it gets going, it's kind of like dun, 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 I guess there's a lot dun, dun, dun. sure, but you like, know what I mean? And so they need they need something like a little bit more vibrant. Let's go through these looks. Yeah. Uh so one second. Uh so first off, we have Argenis, and she is a cactus flower. She she looks incredible. I, I feel like this is the best she has looked, even better than her golden look. I, I love this. Yeah, I love this Uma Thurman Poison Ivy cosplay. Mexican Poison Ivy, but yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it is. Anyway, then... I'm not, being, I'm not joking. I do think it looks really good. <laughs> okay, okay. Then we have Christian. Uh, what was she supposed to be? Was she supposed to be a Noche Buena? Or just like... Girl, I don't know. The only thing I know about this look is that she is not wearing eyebrows, which means she is really paying attention to what Valentina She didn't wear eyebrows saying. in the in the girl group challenge either. Ever, ever since Valentina was like, I love a queen with no eyebrows. She has not worn them. I'm pretty sure she went home and shaved them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she looks great. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Yeah. Um, then we have Galavaro. And she did, you know, uh, some flowers, but also Frida Kahlo. But I have, I mean, 
I'm, I, well, she also said it was inspired by mid, the movie Midsummer. <laughs> it was like, I'm giving Frida Kahlo meets my favorite movie, Midsummer, And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's a weird mix. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but the thing that she has, like the structure, it just, girl, you took that from your car, <laughs> from your car window. <laughs> that looks exactly like a thing. I know, but I it just looks so much. I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about how it looks like the things you put in your, how do you say the... Parabrisas. Windshield. windshield. Yes. I get, I get it. Putting your sure. sure, it looks like that, but I thought it was clever. It was cute. Like, are you telling me that if you were like a kid and you realized that those things would do, you wouldn't be putting them on and being like, yes. Or like, okay, come on. Yeah, like, I, thought yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I really I would... liked it. <laughs> I, I like it. And, 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 but I liked, so here's the reason I liked it was because for me, it's usually about an interesting silhouette. And the fact that it was like this and then she could change it yeah like you know created these different so I she liked looked like, she looked like a perfume bottle that was that was mm -hmm. kind of yeah 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 all right so next up we have lady Kero. and uh isn't this the one that that lolita was like uh, we wanted a mexican flower no she was like it looks like kimchi and then oscar madrasa was like yeah it looks like drag race kyoto and i was like oh. okay yeah okay. Like if she doesn't have like the trademark for that silhouette, but okay. Yeah. I thought it, was, I thought it looked great. Honestly, I thought I it looked great. I think it's okay. They really come for her. They're like, this looks like a dress yeah. you borrowed from Vermelia. This like like they don't And Vermelia like... at her house, like you know, fuck my drag. Like, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> you already sent me home, bitch. <laughs> I know. Leave her alone. Leave Vermelia yeah. alone. Uh then we have Margaret. Okay. I I think I understand now the thing about the first challenge, but now with this one, because the idea and the premise, the concept, even some of the execution blows my mind. It's like, yes, Achipili, come on. Yes, girl. But it looks, to use Ross Matthews' favorite word, it looks crafty. Like it mm -hmm. looks like plastic flowers. It look the fabrics look super cheap. It looks like like literally like decorations for for a kids party. Well, that's what Alejandra Bogue says, right? Yes, She's like, but the no, idea like the idea is like mind blowing, you know. And like from the neck up, it's incredible. Like I love it, but I hate it. You know what I mean? Uh, but here's also here's another thing. This is when they said like, oh, the flowers don't look like Mexican flowers. Yeah, because that she's not representing a specific flower. She's Sochipili, the god of flowers. And also gay people, so I don't know. I love yeah, it, but, but I, you, I mean, you, yeah, but you can't change the fact that it does look plasticky and cheap. Yeah, and, definitely, definitely. Yeah, um, but I love the idea. But yeah, yeah. Just to execute the execution. She she executed this fashion. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So so Chipili, uh, so yeah, god of flowers and poetry and a lot of things that are like kind of like you know uh, artistic. <laughs> yeah and also uh gay gay men and uh, male prostitutes so yeah Love it. Uh, so we were there before the spanish came with the religion to tell us that we were unnatural anyway mm -hmm. next up is matraca and she is a peyote flower now when gala was throwing shade she was like the peyote is not a flower I'm going to put the photo right here that all little balls of peyote have a tiny flower in the middle and that's a peyote flower and that's what she has, you know, here and here and here. On her, yeah. Yes. I love this look. I love it. it, it she said it was handmade. It That's incredible. Surprise, surprise, Chucha. Oh, who's going to be your, your Chia? Um, I don't know. Oh, okay. Not, not, maybe not her. I don't know. <laughs> okay. What do you think? I like, I like this. I think it's cool. I don't like how plasticky the flowers on the head look, but like that's the, 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 like the, yeah, the, yeah. the rest of it looks really good. I love the handmade woven, you know, that's really good. Yeah, it looks comfy. <laughs> uh, then we have Regina. And yeah, she looks incredible. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Why? I hate the nude illusion. It doesn't look well, that that's... bad here, but on the wrong way, it looked kind of bad. I think it looks kind of bad here. Um, and I don't know. It's just like, 
it's very literal. There's just like a big ass flower on her right here. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. So all right, next. <laughs> uh, then we have Serena Morena. Okay, so the fabric of the dress, the dress is incredible if it was made in a completely different fabric. The fabric looks- Or, or, or stone the shit out of it. Girl, come on. Okay, let's, let's say like, okay, she didn't have time to stone it. But the moment that you choose the fabric, that could save a whole look. Mm -hmm. So like this fabric looks like, you know, terrible. Anyway. Well, Valentina also girl, tells her like- Not gluing this. down the back of the week on drag rates? I know. Anyway. Valentina also tells her, like, why are you why aren't you wearing a ring or earrings? Girl, earrings. Like Willem and Alaska would flip out. Like, no earrings. Come on. What about just like a a, a pearl earring? Something. You know? Something that matches the white. Also, collar. I get Alcatraces and I love Alcatraces and they're like super Mexican and whatever. She looks like corn. Okay. <laughs> she looks like Shangela's uh it was uh, the the week week on week on week. Uh, where she went like, with like corn and then popcorn. Um, I yeah. love corn. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so then we <laughs> a right e candidate. <laughs> okay, so, so we're, this, not gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna fame game. This is not the, the fame season. games. No, absolutely but, not. Well, so I'll, let me preface this and then I'll let you please. The whole time I was watching the runway knowing that the theme was flowers of mexico my thought and maybe it's a go-to that just like people didn't want to do it but my thought was where is the simpasuchil i want someone who's going to do simpasuchil i want to see the simpasuchil where is it going to be oh my god didn't see it because... i have i think uh, well well maybe they maybe there is a dia de los muertos wrong way coming up mm -hmm. so that's why sense. they kind of yeah so maybe everybody's using simpasuchil then but yes, Big C gave us Sempasuchil. And the way that this would have burst out in the in on the wrong way, like we would have all lose our minds. This looks yeah. amazing. Well, not just because of, I don't know, if, but the the movement in this is so cool and the silhouette is cool. The fact that the silhouette changes and I am so mad. Like yeah. Yeah. what? Ugh. But also Let's realize that if she struggled with the Rusical, she would have struggled with a girl group challenge. So I feel yeah. like, uh, like, yeah, I mean, we would have seen this on a lip sync, but yeah. <laughs> um, but who do you think from this week was the best? Who gets your cheetah? Let me guess. Can I guess? Mm -hmm. I mean, try. You can try to guess. Well, my guess would be that your cheetah is ma 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 ta 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 she could be, but I'm gonna. Well, don't keep me in suspense. <laughs> no, I'm gonna give it to Argenis. Argenis is my cheetah of the week. Really? Yes, absolutely. This is your first. This is your. This is your first break from Matraca. I think so. I yeah. think I think <laughs> Matraca's gotten your cheetah every week. Yeah. Um. Can you guess who mine is? Oh, yours is Galavaro. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I just liked it. I thought it was really great. Yeah. It was pretty. Um, her makeup looked good. Um, I liked that she thought about the movement and how to change the shape. That, like you said, it did look like a perfume bottle. There was a very big hourglass kind of, you know. I, I liked it a lot. So, and, Galavaro. There you go. Yeah, and it can be reused, reused for a hot day. Oh, there you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we all know what goes on. We all know what goes on your windshield. You can just put that on your windshield. <laughs> so. The Ch oh God, I'm sorry, but the Chirpy of the Week for me, it's Serena. It's just like, okay, let's excuse the fabric. Let's let's excuse that it wasn't stoned. There are still things that you can do to make this less Chirpia and not gluing down the wig properly and not having any rings and not kind of like juging it up with like uh, accessories or something. I don't know. That She's my Chirpy of the Week. My churpia is Serena Morena. That's all I have to say about that. The thing that I am a little surprised by is that we're in week five. And I thought 
that by now I, there would be at least one more like chingona, right? Like I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm underwhelmed, but like, I thought at least Margaret would have a couple of them from me. Like I, you know, from what I know of her, um, I'm really waiting. Like next week, someone really needs to impress like big time. Um, Cause I want to see it. So anyway, there we go. Um, not a single como la flor joke on the runway, like reference, nothing. So whatever, but that was the runway. They announced who the winner of this week's Maxi Reto is. And um, it ends up being Galavaro. Um, this is her first win. But they announce because of that, what they're doing is discussing whether or not they're going to also have Matraca be the winner as well. And that's what they do. But the, clearly, the winners this week were chosen based off of the runway. Mm, yes and no. Oh, it, was kind oh, of yes. Like, no it was kind of to balance it out because Matraca had great uh, criti uh, critiques for the challenge and not so great for the runway. And Gala had great critiques for the runway and not so great for the challenge. Um, so uh, this week's lip sync iconico was between Serena Morena Otra vez and Argenis. Otra vez. So the song Amor Prohibido by Selena. Also, like Serena is like like in the her confessional, like, girl, this is your second lip sync in a row. Like you were you were to step it up, and it's like, girl, you have lip sync every single this episode. Your... What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> right. So um the funny thing I noticed is that Margaret and Gala can't help but lip sync in the back. They yeah. like you know, and then halfway through, Lady Kero is like doing it too. Um, the thing I thought was funny was that Serena kind of has Selena hair. Mm -hmm. Like Selena had did that hairstyle. So that was kind of funny. Um, but I don't know. How do you feel about this lip sync? I think it was pretty great. It's pretty old school drag, you know, to, to lip sync to Selena. And uh, and I genuinely feel that Argenis, you know, kind of swept the floor with, with Serena. I feel like, uh, yeah. you know, Serena has a lot of energy and whatever, but like her lip syncs are not, they don't excite me, you know? And it's right. not the splits and it's not the, you know, because it was a Selena song. Uh, it's just, yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't excite me. The result is Argenis, Shantae's, <laughs> and Serena sashays away. <laughs> um, do you want to do a little bit of explaining the reference? Yeah, so really quickly, I, I don't have much to say. Other than at some point, I think it was, yeah, it was with Regina because Regina had uh, butterflies. Uh, they say like, oh, mariposona. So mariposon is another J word <laughs> because mariposon is kind of like maricon, you know, you're like a butterfly because your hands go like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're basically like butterflies are also like, you know, uh, a gay a gay slur that then eventually we, we reclaimed. Uh, then at some point, somebody comes out in red. Uh, I can't remember exactly who. I'm going to put it right here. Uh, but they go like, Esa de Rojo. So to say that, another rhyme, we rhyme everything in Mexico. So it's like, Esa de Rojo, yo me la cojo. So it's like, that woman in red, I fuck her. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically that's, uh, they didn't say that second part. They, were, they just went like, Esa de Rojo. And somebody was like, oh my God. And that's what that was it. And then they said, like, um, I think it was either about Gala or about somebody else, but they were like, it, she's a vedette that gets, you know, she trains as a vedette. Because, like, mm. una vedette que se prepara como vedette. Una bailarina que se prepara como bailarina. That's a Nurka uh, quote me, that we love, yes. Because, again, she's talking about, and this is the this is one thing that Nurka can, you know, show off because she genuinely is an amazing dancer but so every time that she criticizes another actress for trying to dance a role that she has danced before she goes like no 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 esa no es vedet yo soy vedet una vedet que se entrena como vedet acróbata que se entrena como acróbata bailas exactly so yeah <laughs> those were the references this <laughs> week how, how great yeah um do you have someone that you feel is the front runner this week uh, I I feel like I need two or three more episodes for things to settle down because right now it could be the start of Matraca now going up 
and kind of like either Christian or Regina kind of like fumbling, but we don't know. So I feel like they are trying to break Regina, honestly. Uh, well, there was some, there was, so that moment at the beginning of the episode where, where Margaret says like, oh, Christian, she's gonna, you know, she thinks she's amazing, but the only place to go is down when you're yeah. up here. So I was wondering if that was like a little moment where they're like, oh, they're, they're, that's their reminder that this storyline is going to come up, right? Because, because I feel like Christian is the front runner still. I feel like what we're going to get is that she's going to stumble in like one or two episodes and probably snatch game which would be wild you know and that's gonna give her kind of like some vulnerability and blah blah blah, and then she's gonna rise up again so. yeah i think that we're starting to see the possibility of like galavaro doing really well um rising up maybe being a front runner but who knows i guess we'll see right yeah all right should we do an art moment yes art art art, art, art. Did somebody mention art? <laughs> All right. Um, well, we got a couple people this this week. Um, and the people that I want to talk about, uh, two of them did several drawings. Um, so the first one is Brandon Michel. Brandon drew Margaret Ia, um, Matraca, and Regina Oche. Nice. Um, the, it's I love this style. It's really cool. So check out Brandon's stuff. Um, we also otra vez have Muerta <laughs> Mosca, but hey, they're drawn consistently. Yeah. So Muerta Mosca did two different um, looks of Galavaro mm -hmm. and also a Serena Morena look. Um, nice. They're great. And then um, the last two we have are um, Virenus, who drew Margaret and um, Viz Ariat. Ar oh, sorry. Aretea, who drew uh, Magos. Yeah. Margaret. <laughs> um, so check them out. Definitely um, look up their work. Um, show them some love. You know, leave them a nice little comment about their amazing artwork. Um, next week on Drag Race, it looks like, well, excuse me. Next week on Drag Race Mexico, it looks like we get maybe a Dia de Muertos, like oh, mini reto. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that was kind of cool. And then... We also have Snatch Game. Is there, real quick, is there anyone, and I saw that on Drag Race Mexico's Instagram, they posted a commercial where they sort of reveal who one <clears> or two of them are. I haven't seen it. I, I, I don't want to. It. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. So, are, but real quick, is there anyone that you hope someone impersonates? Yes. So, Juan Gabriel, Gloria Trevi, Paulina Rubio, um, Niurka, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel like those are my my top, my top choices that would be kind of like funny, iconic, old school drag, and blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Who would you Who would you be? Who? I, oh God, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know because I cannot do voices and so many people you have to have so such a specific voice and I'm terrible at voices. You can so always I, choose a character that you don't have to do a voice for. I mean, I, I would I would probably try attempt to do Juan Gabriel and see what happens. I'd just be like I'd just be like the Cree Cree cricket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be nice. Yeah. You know, just show up and be like, mm -hmm, and and just talk about like, how you knew Kri Kri the whole yes, time. Yes, and, and be like, like so be like super gay and be like, oh yes, I'm friends with the ugly doll and I'm friends with the yeah with the pot and the pan. Yeah. Yeah, just be like, well, I knew, you know, Kri Kri and whatever. <laughs> I think it'd be funny. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um well, I guess we'll find out, right? I mean, there are definitely people who I think like who I have choices of who I'd be if I was on like u.s drag race but yes, definitely. we don't need to get into that right now <laughs> um it looks like the judges panel will also be joined by mauricio martinez do you want to say anything about that yes so here here's what's going to happen <laughs> so we're going to acknowledge that he's there next episode and we're going to tell you who he is and what he has done and that's it then we're not going to talk about him because um He's he's kind of problematic, and yeah, I don't know why he was invited to this. Somebody didn't do their research, uh, but Twitter is gonna be on fire next week. So so yeah. 
All right. Well, Chucho, yes. tell people where to find you. Okay. You can find me on Twitter as Chucho underscore Q and on Instagram and Letterbox and TikTok as Chucho underscore QMP. All right. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky Threads, and TikTok at Terry Blass. What's so funny? <laughs> Socials. I mean, you, I'm mostly on Instagram and Twitter. I know, I know. Or at my website, terryblast.com. Thank you for joining us. Until next time. And as always, respeta tu cultura, cultura maricón. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I'm ready. Are we record? Yeah, we're recording. Yeah. So that brings us to <laughs> the silence. <laughs>